Hey guys, I'm Dion from Dion Video Productions, and in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to make animated like and subscribe button video overlays in Final Cut Pro 10. Now what you're seeing right now are examples of how you can use this animation in your video. As you can see, this is a great way to subtly yet effectively call attention to your channel, asking people to like and subscribe while also showing your channel name and a brief description of what you do. But of course, before we get started, be sure to leave a like down below and subscribe for more content like this. Alright, let's get to the tutorial. Alright, so this is quite an in-depth tutorial, so I've broken this down into smaller sections as seen below, and we'll start off with a brief overview of what we're going to do. First, you need a screen recording of the appropriate elements. Then we will resize the recording, shrinking it down to only the parts that we need. Once this is done, through multiple layers, we're going to key out the individual items that we'll be using. So this includes the channel name, the like button, and of course the subscribe icon. And what this will allow us to do is rearrange the elements. To bring all these elements together, we're going to be adding a new background using the same tone of white to make it look like one single unit. And we're then going to be replacing the text with our own. So we're going to have the channel name and instead of subscriber count, we're going to have a brief description of what the channel does. Finally, we're going to finish this off with some sliding in and out animations. So without further ado, let's get started. The first thing you're going to want to do is get a screen recording of the like and subscribe buttons being pressed. Now you also want to make sure to include your channel name, icon, and subscriber count in the video as well as these are all elements that we'll be using later on. Now to record your screen you can use ScreenFlow like I'm doing or you can use a free alternative QuickTime Player. Now that we have the screen recording let's import it to Final Cut Pro 10. And once you've done that we're going to go ahead and drag this into the project line. From here we're going to go ahead and expand the project. We can do this by pressing Shift Z. And let's go ahead and trim off the parts that we don't need. Now in this case we want the recording to start just before the mouse hits the like button. And we're going to want it to end just as it sits on the bell icon. There we go. So we've now shortened the clip to around 9 seconds. Uh, we are going to shorten this further, but this will be later on in the video. Now going back to what I said earlier, the next thing we're going to do is crop out the parts of the clip that we don't need. Now to do this, we're going to be using the crop tool and affect the top, bottom, right and left axes all to bring them in closer uh, as to remove all the parts that we don't need and just be left with those elements that we do need. Now one thing that's important to note is that some of the elements do change size slightly. For example, looking at the bell icon here, you can see that this not only shows up, but is also larger towards the end of the clip. So you want to make sure your preview is at that point as to not crop out any part of the animation. Particularly in this case, it's better to oversize slightly with thicker margins than smaller. We're going to make it more detailed later. All right, so as you can see, we have now cropped out the major parts of the screen recording that are not necessary here. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is create multiple layers in the timeline. So for this, I suggest you shrink the size of the thumbnails to make it a little bit easier to see the different layers. And what we're going to do is copy that first clip and paste it three times. So we'll be left with four identical clips and we're just going to drag them on top of each other. Now in this case, there's no particular order. Just drag them on top of each other and make sure they align perfectly so that they all play back at the same time. Now, as you can see, we have four separate layers. Now, each of these layers is going to represent a different element of the uh, of the recording here. Now, a better way to keep track of this is by pressing the index menu, and we're actually going to rename some of these. So the bottom clip will represent our background. The one above that will be for the channel name and subscriber count and icon. So we'll just call this name. And next we have the like button. And finally, subscribe. All right, so this will make it a little bit easier to keep track of which layer is what. Uh, and then we can go ahead and close the icon or the index here. The next step is going to be the longest step, and that is individually keying out each of these items. So we're going to do this one by one, starting off with the channel name, icon, and the subscriber count. And what we're going to do is we're just going to select this layer, drag it over just to make sure there's no confusion or interference. And especially when dealing with a white on black background, it makes it very easy, of course, to see what is cropped and what is not. Uh, even more so, we're going to zoom into 400% and make this even more visible. And then making sure that the right layer is selected, we're going to use the same parameters that we used before. In this case, we're just going to be cropping it even further as to focus on only the specific icons that we want. Now with this, you do want to be relatively precise and you want to make sure that the margins are as thin as possible as this will give you as much flexibility later on in the project when it comes to moving these individual elements around. But something like this looks quite good. So what we can do now is go ahead and press done uh, and let's look at the, uh, the holistic view of the project here. And as you can see, we have perfectly keyed out this specific element. And from here, we're going to go on to the next one. In this case, let's move on to the like button. 
So as you can see, I'm just doing the exact same thing here. Now notice that I've left the, uh, the player head marker in the project line right where the button is at its largest, which in this case, it will include this blue layover uh, square. Now we wanna make sure that that is incorporated into the crop as well as of course the thumbs down button and the blue bar down below. So uh, just bear this in mind when you're cropping as you don't wanna cut out any parts that would otherwise be there. All right, so I'm pretty happy with the way this looks. Uh, as you can see, I've kept the margins very slim, just like in the previous uh, crop, and I've tried to make them identical on both the left and right sides. Uh, let's go ahead and zoom out and move this next to our other element. So as you can see, we've now got the channel name completed, the like button, and this now just leaves the subscribe and the notification bell icon. Again, so just like before, we're gonna make sure this plays through and gets to the point where the notification or the animation is at its largest, uh, which in this case is right as the bell is pressed. We're gonna make sure we wanna include that blue icon as we're cropping in from the right and the bottom. I think that looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and zoom out here. And as you can see, we now have all three elements in their own separate little box. So the last layer that we have left is the background layer. Now, the only purpose that this really serves is to, well, serve as the background. So in this case, what we want is we wanna make sure that we get the exact same shade of white that the other elements have as to blend them in perfectly when we start rearranging them. Now, to give us some more room to work with, I'm just gonna zoom in the scale here. Again, this will not matter because we're just dealing with a plain color, so scaling will not affect the visual quality. Now, as you can see, we do have this line and we're gonna to want to make sure we work around that as we don't want this incorporated. So I'm just gonna lower the the crop a little bit and then get the line out of the way. All right, so this gives us just the general shape for the background. Uh, it's a little bit large, but we'll make more adjustments as we go. Uh, for now, let's bring in some overlays to uh, allow us to roughly center these icons. Now for your own projects, I do of course recommend that you center them either using the coordinates or using tools to get it perfectly. But just for the sake of this video here, I'm just gonna drag them in and eyeball it just to give you an idea of how this is going to look. Now, the next thing we're gonna do is zoom in a little bit and actually change the scale of the channel name because it's relatively small. In this case, we're just gonna bring this up slightly Lightly. Now I'm going to go ahead and increase this to 120%. Now bear in mind that we will lose a little bit of quality here, particularly in the text, but this is something that we will address as we move on. I think the channel name looks a little bit better uh, when it's a little bit larger. Now let's go ahead and bring the other elements slightly closer into frame here. As you can see, I've just hidden the background by selecting the layer and pressing V. Uh, so this is an easy way to make sure that the two or that the different elements do not overlap. You wanna bring them as close as possible, of course, while not overlapping. Uh, this right here is why working with as thin as possible margins uh, is best because it will allow you to bring the items as close as possible. And now, of course, we're gonna adjust the background here. So we're gonna to wanna to make sure that this matches the size of the other three elements that we have. As you can see, I've now also cropped the background layer to more closely represent and match that of the other three icons. And as you can see, as we play this back, this works pretty well and already start, is starting to look like something that the final product will represent. The next thing you're gonna to want to do is address the text. Now, in this case, we're just gonna copy and paste the background layer uh, as this, of course, has the perfect color already. So we're just gonna go ahead and bring this into the front and then put it on top of the uh, of our layer here. Now, this is important because we wanted to overlay other elements in the timeline. Now, we're gonna go ahead and affect the scale. We're gonna bring this down as, of course, it doesn't need to be this large as it is only covering the text. So again, we're just gonna scale it down and then reposition it accordingly. So as you can see, we now have a white box that perfectly covers the text. We can go ahead and confirm this by pressing V to hide or show the layer. Now, of course, what we're gonna do is replace the current text with new text. So we're gonna add a custom layer here of custom text, and we'll just go ahead and drag this over. All right, so as you can see, we have now typed out the text. Uh, currently, it is, of course, far too large and in the wrong place. So let's go ahead and shrink this down. And then we're just gonna drag this down along the, uh, along the Y axis to bring it onto the other elements. And now let's go under the face settings here and first of all, change the color to black to match, of course, the text that is currently there. Now, the next thing we're gonna to want to do is change the font. Now, in this case, YouTube uses a font called Roboto, which can be downloaded for free online if it's not already installed on your machine. And now we're just simply gonna do a little bit of trial and error to bring this as close to the real uh, text as possible in terms of its size and of course the alignment here. So I've hidden the, uh, the white box currently as to show both the old text and the new text to make it as easy as possible to get this to, uh, to overlay. All right, so if we go ahead and overlay the two text elements here, as you can see, this almost looks identical to that of the original text, which is perfect. Now, the next thing we're gonna do is simply 
copy and paste this layer and duplicate it by simply pressing Alt, click and shift. And this will uh, create the second text that we're gonna be adding and that is the subscriber count. Now, currently, of course, we have the subscriber count as you normally see under the channel name, but for large channels like mine, this changes all the time. No, I'm just kidding. But I'd rather show a brief description of my channel, giving the viewer an idea of what kind of content I make. So from my channel, I copy over a three word description, uh, just sort of highlighting the type of content that I upload. And I think this would be a very good place to show this. So as you can see here, we have it, film, tech, and tutorials. Now let's go ahead and match the color. So we'll just simply use the eyedrop here and then we can match it to the other existing text. So we have this sort of very dark gray. There we go, that looks pretty good to me. And we're gonna do the same thing. So we're just gonna go ahead and layer this over or drag this over and then resize it accordingly to get it as close as possible to the original. All right, so as you can see, we have now completed the text and I have matched the colors, fonts, and the size to, uh, to the original as close as possible. So as you can see, if we go ahead and bring in the background layer, uh, this almost looks Perfect. In fact, I'm very happy with the way this turned out. Now, one additional thing you can do is replace your channel icon with a more high quality image. In this particular example, I'm gonna leave it as it currently is, but that is something that you can do to again, make it even sharper. Okay, now let's go ahead and play this through and see what we currently have here. So as you can see, this looks much better. The box now perfectly matches the rest of the elements. The text looks good and the icons are all clearly visible. Now that we're done working with these individual layers, let's go ahead and group them together as one compound clip. This will make future editing much more easy. So we're just gonna go ahead and right click and select the compound clip option. And as you can see, these layers are now one layer. So next, we're gonna go ahead and drag this, uh, this element that we've created here towards the bottom of the screen. Now you can either have this in the lower left or lower right or really anywhere. Uh, but in my case, I'll have it in the lower left as I usually have a watermark in the lower right here. Uh, so using the, uh, the safe zones here, I'll just sort of guide this to uh, along the Y or along the X axis and then bring it down on the Y axis all the way to the bottom of the frame. At this point, I actually decide to change the scale slightly again. Now, of course, the higher we make the scale, the more quality you'll technically lose. But at this size, we're not actually gonna notice much, especially considering the fact that we've added the new text and that the icons are quite clear already. So we're just gonna go ahead and change this to 120% and adjust it again along the Y axis to make sure everything stays in frame. So now it's time to sort of polish the timing of the clip as currently we have again a nine second clip which is too long for what this is I believe. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and zoom in on the timeline here, make the icons a little bit bigger as of course we're now only dealing with one layer and let's go ahead and scrub through and see how we want this to play out. Now in this case I do think the, uh, the pause on the like button is a little bit too long so we can go ahead and just cut out this middle part. And now the next thing I wanna do is I don't want there to be a gap between the mouse disappearing from screen and then reappearing again. I want that to be as quick and seamless as possible. And of course we can also cut it out a little bit quicker at the end. Uh, and as you can see, we're now left with a seven second clip, which is already significantly shorter. Uh, but in fact, we're gonna go ahead and shorten this a little bit more, but you can really play around with this as of course, this will depend on what you've done in your specific screen recording. My suggestion is to make this relatively quick. You don't want it to be too quick that it's not noticeable, but again, you don't want it to be too distracting from your content. You just wanted to show and then hide again. So at this point, the clip is seven seconds long. Let's go ahead and save that as a new compound clip. And now we're gonna work on the animation. So we're gonna right click on it and select show video animations. And as you can see, this, this expanded view will, uh, will show up. Now we're gonna be using keyframes to simply have this appear and disappear off screen along sliding along the Y axis. So the first thing we're gonna do is drag this off screen, add a keyframe by pressing the diamond here, and you'll see this appear overlay on the clip. And then several frames later, we're gonna bring this back to the previous position on the Y axis and it will automatically create a new keyframe. And as you can see, the animation is added. It is just that simple. Now for the way out, we're gonna do the exact same thing. We're gonna add another keyframe and then towards the end, we'll just drag it right off screen. Now, the next thing we can do is of course, retime this animation as of course we want this to also be uh, just at the right speed. So we can actually move these little diamonds across the, uh, the, the project here. Of course, bringing them further out to expand or to lengthen the transition and bringing them closer together to shorten it. And as you can see, in this case, I just want the pace to be a little bit faster than that of the intro here, uh, the intro animation, and we'll go ahead and remove the last bit. So as you can see, we have now shortened the clip even further to now be only six seconds. Uh, let's go ahead and hide the animations and let's see what we've got. Here it is playing back. I think this looks really nice. This is a uh, good pace, not too fast, not too slow. Now let's go ahead and test this by dragging it over a different clip. So what 
we're gonna do is copy it. And as you can see here uh, in my timeline, I have a different project and we're just gonna paste it. And now let's go ahead and play this back and give you an idea here. So we've got the title sequence, then we got the screenshot of the, of the uh, playlist. And there we go, boom, here it is, the new animation that we just created with the like and subscribe buttons. And I think this looks really, really nice. Again, it strikes a good balance between being subtle while not taking too much attention from the content and still, uh, well, calling attention towards what you want, in this case, your channel, and of course, the interactive buttons that go along with that. And that's it. All right, guys, thank you very much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, be sure to leave a like down below and subscribe for more content like this. Thank you very much for watching.